Hey folks, Evil DM here. I'm back with another episode of my Palladium series. This time we're going to go over uh, Palladium Fantasy 2nd Edition character creation. Just going over the steps and the little tips that I've picked up over the years when I used to play uh, a little bit of 2nd Edition. And these steps hopefully will flesh out a character for you and help you think a little bit ahead of time as you're adding things together. Uh, I'm just going to go over the steps that I've used in the past. So not really a second edition player so to speak but i'm enjoying it more and more as i'm rereading it again i do my heart does lie in one e but hey you know sometimes you gotta go what you gotta go with what you go with you know say that two times fast anyway so first thing i like to do is kind of get the concept and the race and the class together in my mind of what i want to play and what i really want to get out of the game first Talk to your GM, see where the campaign's going to take place. Here's a map. For an example, maybe he might tell you you're playing in certain areas only and certain races and certain classes are restricted. So always check with your GM. That's always step zero. Step one, after you've determined that and what you want to uh, play, I would go to page 288 and look over the player races. Generally, uh, they're all open depending on your GM, of course and find out if he's restricting any. So just kind of go over it and jot down some basic things about the race, how they're ra uh, rolled up, see how the human right here, everything's all listed right here, how to roll everything up. Just kind of jot that on. Uh, uh, sometimes I like to use index cards like these just to jot down little things. If you want, you can always use, you know, one of these. It really doesn't matter. I mean, you can use a computer, but yeah, here's the book that you will need to be referencing. So make sure you get a bunch of copies of that, or at least a couple copies of the PDF, which you can get through drive through RPG uh, pretty cheap. Anyway, uh, now that we've gotten that down, you're going to want to roll your attributes. And here we're sticking with just human because it's right on the screen. It basically tells you to roll them how you want in this particular order. Now check with your GM because he may just say... Go ahead and roll 3d6 and assign them however you want. So just check to see how they want to do that. Normally you just roll them in order as they're listed there. Because other races, as we can see, sometimes here, make sure you can see that, okay. Some of them have different rolls for them. So the PP has a 4d6 as opposed to a 2d6 for an MA as a 3d6. So he may have you roll it differently or just check with your GM overall how you want that roll, how he wants that rolled up and move forward for them. Now, with a human, anything that rolls a 16, 17, or 18, you get to roll an additional D6 and add it to that total. Now, that's only for humans. Now, I've seen other GMs allow like an exploding 6. If when you roll that extra 6 and you get another 6, you can roll yet again. And then you roll another 6, you can roll again. So it really depends on your GM, see if there's any little house rules or little quirk things like that that he likes to incorporate into his campaign when playing the game. Now, other races, uh, which is anything basically other than non-humans, don't get that exploding, that extra die, unless they have a 2d6 like this in one of their categories. If they have a 2d6 like that, then if they get a 12, they're allowed to roll an additional d6 and add it to the total. I suggest keeping these numbers on a scrap paper, paper or like I showed before, an index card just for the time being because you're going to be modifying those as you move along throughout your character creation uh, example here. So once you do that, you're going to want to go to page 20 and you have to check with your GM if they're going to be playing with this or not because they may not be playing with this uh, Page 21, actually. Uh, 20 to 21, the psionic. Step 3, determine it. The, the book has a different process than what I'm doing here. This one actually makes it a little bit more um, flowing, easier to write things down, so you don't have to uh, keep flipping back and forth too much because you're writing things on a piece of paper, picking things ahead of time, and adding them together as you're going along. Step uh, 3, additionally, is determine psionics. This is optional. You're going to roll percentile here. And determine if you have psychic abilities or sorry, psychic sonic abilities or psionic abilities, I should say. Unless you have a class that has the actual master psionic class would be example. Mind Mage is another one. Have those abilities uh, as listed there. But 
Generally, you roll. Chances are you may or may not get it. Worry about it. Check with your GM. If you do, go over it here. It explains exactly how it works. Go over to page 21 and full, go through with it. If the GM says, nope, skip that step. All right, now we're going to go to page 78-ish. And we're going to pick, well, actually it starts at 73. I apologize for that. 73 is basically where all the character classes or the uh, OCC start. So page 73 starts for the clergy. 70, I'm sorry, 94 is men at arms. 96 is the optional OCCs. Uh, practitioners of magic starts on page 245. And psychics are 161. Again, ask your GM if there's any restrictions on the character class that you're going to play. If there's any additional requirements, look under the class. It may say you need a certain uh, PPE or a certain, I'm sorry, sorry, PP or a certain PS for the class. I wouldn't worry too much about it uh, because, for example, let's see here. Some of them have a requirement on the actual class itself, but say like an IQ 9, a PE of 12 or higher for a druid. I wouldn't worry about it too much because when you're picking the skills and related skills and things like that and secondary skills, you might get a bonus to your stat that would push you up to it. So I wouldn't worry about it right away. And if you don't qualify for a talk with your GM, maybe he'll let you switch a number around by minusing one off something else and adding it to another. Some GMs are really cool about that and let you play whatever you want. They may even waive that requirement. It really doesn't matter. Just check with the GM. Just let them determine that. Don't just assume. But if they're a stickler for the rules and they're just like, nope, you have to quick you have to meet that IQ nine and PE of twelve to get that class, then look into what you can get to increase that. There are various things that will increase that uh requirement. So after you do that, you're going to want to look at your OCCs and write those down. For example, the Druid here, you're going to write all these down. Go over to the actual skills itself, uh, which we start at page 47. Uh, add your bonuses together. Make sure you write them on a scrap paper just in case. Do your OCC. Pick your related skills, six of the choice at level one. You can, If you pick anything here, it adds a bonus, so they're actually encouraging you to pick the ones here. I would probably stick with some of these just to start because you get a lot of good bonuses here and it gives you good suggestions. Secondary skills, just pick whatever you want. That's kind of like your hobbies, things like that. Write down your equipment or make note of it for now because you're going to want to change that later on. Okay, so now that you've done that, also check with your GM when picking your skills, related skills, secondary skills, about languages because it's important that your group can communicate with each other if you don't have a common tongue with each other. The GMs that I played with in the past generally would give us um, like common. He would make up a language called common and give us a percentage. Like us, He actually made us roll percentile dice and see how much of that language we understood. And that's the number we started with. And as we go along, he would kind of add to it basically the same way as it would do uh, with this. He would give us a 5%, 10%, whatever he decided However, because if we're talking to each other constantly, we're learning. So he kind of boosted it up as we went along. So that you can actually have something in common. Because a group that cannot talk to each other is actually quite hysterical. Because you'd have certain people in a certain group talking to each other, translating for other people who know the language of the other people. It's really weird. So just talk with your GM. Maybe he has a plan. Maybe he wants everyone to have a common tongue, so to speak. It's always good to know that as well. So once we determined our skills and our abilities and things like that, we're going to want to take all the little bonuses that we've gotten from those skills and abilities and add them to whatever particular uh, stat that you have because things like uh, boxing and uh, some hand-to-hand -hand skills may give you bonuses to certain things, like I said before, for your uh, attribute requirements. So just put those together. Make sure, remember, you wrote them on little scraps of paper, so you're writing everything together on the character sheet. Just make sure you do that. Then after that, you're going to want to do your SDC uh, and your HP. So 
we're going to go back to page 18 for that. That explains it right there for you. And basically, SDC is pretty simple. 3D6 if you're amended arms and uh, 1D6. Where is it? 1D6 for everybody else. And there are some other character classes and certain non-human specific race, uh, races that give you special SDC bonuses and they're cumulative with the SDC. So check with those. Check with your GM as well to determine how those work together. Hit points, you're going to take your uh, PE and add a D6 roll. Boom. Done. Again, there are probably certain races that give you different things. Check with your GM, but generally it's going to be the PE plus a D6. Uh, then you're going to go to page 23. And before you do that, you're going to ask your GM yet again if there is any restrictions on alignments. He may only want to play a good campaign with good principal I mean, not principal, but just good aligned characters or just basically some neutral aligned characters or selfish alignment, not evil. You never know. Just ask the GM. If he says, nah, it's fine, then you're perfectly fine. Step nine is money and equipment. Remember how I said to make note of the equipment that you get generally? So you're going to start transferring that onto your sheet and filling in the uh, SDC for the armor. The, the Go flip to the weapons page and add the two hits for the weapons and the parries and the, everything else like that. Add to your character sheet. Also, you get some starting gold, which is listed there, starting stuff you have. You can also go buy new equipment if you want or just hold on to it. It's up to you. Generally, it's a good idea to hold on to the gold and just roll with what they give you because they give you pretty, some pretty good starting uh, equipment packages. Again, check with your GM. He may modify that and give you something better or worse. So it's really up to your GM running the campaign for that. Finally, you're going to want to go to page 32, and this is kind of an optional step. You don't have to do this at all. And But I know a lot of people like doing character background stuff. It, it, it's kind of fun to roll random things for your character. It helps role play, get, get in the role play mood, role playing your character, getting into the character world. You want to maybe birth order to see who you first born. Then you can, hmm, okay, maybe I have no brothers and sisters. I'm third born. Oh, I have a brother and a sister. I have two brothers. I have two sisters. Something like that. Wait. That's up to you. You can choose these things or roll them. Ask your GM how he wants to handle it. He may say just write down whatever you want. But it's good to go in here to get a good idea of what your character is and how he acts. You really don't have to really stick to it too much. But I think it gives you a good roundabout character. If you go through his land of origin, of course, ask the GM about this too. Because maybe certain lands you wouldn't be coming from. But I don't see why it really mattered. Type of environment that you grew up in, so what you're used to, because maybe you're, you've grown up in a little farm community and you'll be going into big cities, so you'd be like the farm boy going into the city. Then the opposite, you are you were born in a large, large city and you're going to the wilderness area, so you're a city boy going inside the wilderness. Oh my god, you can't do this or that. These type of things I think are kind of important because it does bring up some some skills and some abilities that would not be listed on the character sheet or ability or skills that you would get by secondary or something like that. Because if you grew up in a little farm wilderness area, maybe you know foraging a little bit better. Maybe you can identify plants a little bit better. Just things like that. Social background, family background, that's really kind of, again, up to you. Racial hostilities and biases. Eh, I don't know if you really want to play with that because... You look, you look upon the following with disgust, contempt, and hatred. Do you really want that in your campaign to start? I mean, I understand there was the whole rivalry between elves and dwarves and things like that, and how man usually hates the, the beast. Again, know your group before going on to this. Maybe the GM's going to pass on this one. Maybe he won't. You never know. So, And then check over the aging stuff. Uh, just so if you have a character that's a little bit older, there's some modifiers to take into consideration when, when doing it. Again, this is all up to uh, your GM's discretion. Uh, that's pretty much how you roll up a character in 2nd edition, how everything works. There are character sheets available at Palladium.com. We have to thank Palladium.com for actually giving those us things and the books and everything like that. Hopefully this has been... Uh, informational for you and again this is made for informational purposes only and 
Keep it original, keep it old school, and good night, everybody.